Hello and welcome to News Click. Fires in the Amazon are continuing to rage, with an 84% increase in the number of fires recorded this year as compared to the same period last year. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, has given a variety of reasons for this increase, going from climactic conditions to saying that environmentalists are deliberately causing these fires to malign his government. But scientists have given different reasons. So today we have with us Prabir Purkayasta to talk more about these reasons and the responses that have come to it. So uh, Prabir, starting with the causes, can you tell us more about why there has been such an increase in the number of fires this year? Well, if you know what Bolsonaro stood for in the election itself, he has said that he thinks there are too many Indians, as he calls them, the indigenous people. And in the Amazon, they have just too much land. Therefore, his program from the beginning, and he stated it with no hesitation, no obfuscation, no uh, pretense, was to clear large areas in the Amazon, use it for cattle ranching or for soya cultiv bean cultivation, open it for logging companies, as well as open it for mines. So this has been his stated, shall we say, objective. And if we see where the fires are taking place, of course, this is the start of the dry season. Every year there are fires in the Amazon in this period and this will go up to about September, October. But the point is the numbers that have increased sharply this year, we can also see they are taking place next to roads. So therefore, there does seem to be a deliberate intention starting from the edges, so to say, to eat into the Amazon exactly as Bolsonaro and his, shall we say, his uh, friends and relations want, which is to take away land from the Amazon forests and use it for other purposes. So this, I think, is the basic issue. And uh, not only was this pointed out by the Brazilian Space Agency and uh, in showing there's an increase in fires, but the head of the Space Agency was sacked because he pointed this out. Mm -hmm. Now the question is what now we have is independent confirmation what the Brazilian Space Agency had said. And this has come out from variety of, shall we say, sources based in the, uh, in, in the, the, sp in the space. Because there are a number of, uh, shall we say, satellites which image the globe. And some of them are specifically devoted to imaging forest fires. Mm. So all of this, and this is a picture that we have from the Modi system, all of this show the increased frequency fire of fires and it's very easy to con uh, compare the satellite imagery of this year to last year. So I think the case is not even open to question and the fact that Bolsonaro showed no interest in fighting the fires earlier. Now of course he has declared a, a moratorium for the time being on the forest fires which means that he said hey wait a little it's getting too uh, hot for me and after some time you know you can do it again. So this seems to be the approach. There is no fundamental change in the approach even as late as a week back he has gone on record talking of too many Indians. Mm. Earlier he had even said that the American, the US cavalry was efficient meaning in removing quote unquote Indians from North America and we have been less efficient. The Brazilian cavalry was less efficient. So, you know, in, in a certain sense, it really speaks of a larger genocidal agents, a, agenda he seems to have regarding the Amazon and particularly is indigenous people. And also, what do you think about the responses coming to this, uh, these fires? Of course, there's Bolsonaro's response, but also these fires are not limited to just Brazil. There's also Bolivia, which is neighboring Brazil. And President uh, Evo Morales' response has been quite different. So, what do you think about these responses and the global responses that have come? You see, I think there are two sets of issues here. One is that there is an argument which the Amazonian countries, including Brazil, uh, Bolivia, Argentina, Paraguay and others have made, which is that Amazon is very important for the world and we can discuss why it is so. But more than that, if we have to keep our forests, then there has to be a global compensation for what we are doing. This is a part of the climate justice agenda, which means easy financing, low loans, low cost loans to the people to develop alternate ways of using this. Scientific forestry also must be supported by uh, finance. And if you don't want the uh, 
uh, rich countries to grow forests, which none of them seem to be willing to do. I just don't see that you know you could reverse, the, shall we say, the forestry in Western Europe and so on. Then, of course, the demand of climate justice is these countries should be compensated. So all of these countries have said that we need to use the forest land efficiently and also expand agriculture in some of these areas, but taking into account the needs of the environment. And Evo Morales in Bolivia have taken the issue of forest fires very seriously. We have pictures of him fighting the forest fires. But the real issue that underlies all of this is the issue also of climate justice and development, hmm. that you cannot think of the Amazon forest being kept without they are being in some sense globally supported in this endeavor because it is a fact that this land hmm. under forest can be utilized. The question is how can it be utilized in a way that it makes sense to the people of the area, it makes sense to the indigenous people who are still there and it makes sense also to the rest of the world. This is a complex democratic process of reconciling, reconciling this. So I don't think it's just a question of either or, as Bolsonaro is posing, or a lot of the global north, shall we say, also argues that Amazon forests should be left as is. But they are also not willing to take into account that yeah. what is it that we do in order for the Amazon forest to be kept. That's, I think, also the larger question we have. What is very clear that there is behind this, whether it is a Trump or it's a Bolsonaro, there is also the white nationalism agenda mm -hmm. that the, the indigenous people deserve to be thrown out and we should use those economic resources for our benefit. And there is also the agenda of, shall we say, big capital. How can we really use this more efficiently, more efficiently for the corporate world? And all of this is also enmeshed with the climate denial, climate change deniers, which to which both Bolsonaro and both Trump belong. It's interesting that the global right is generally a climate change skeptic. Yeah. And even Mr. Modi, for instance, really doesn't seem to believe in climate change because mm -hmm. he's been on record earlier about it. And of course, he gives lip service to it today. But if you see the, for instance, attack to the Forest uh, mm -hmm. Rights Act in India coming from this government, you see a similar pattern that seems to be there. So both, so both aspects are involved. One is the attitude to the indigenous people. And the other is the attitude to climate change itself mm. and the interest of capital versus the interest of the people. So we also have a lot of economic models that advocate that it is better to uh, mitigate the effects of these uh, changes later on in the future rather than addressing them now. And right now it's just better to work in the interest of capital. So what do you feel about these? Is this the way to go? Well, they argue that it's better to work in the effects for, for development. Not They don't say they want to work for capital. That's, of course, the argument they would give. And they would also say that uh, the mitigation in the future is less costly because it would be richer. So these are the, this is the argument. Of course, as we know, all economic models appear to be objective, but they have their values embedded in it in different forms. So this, I would say, embeds the value of capital and that too of the developed countries in this model in different ways. One is the effect of climate change. And as we know, if the Amazonian forest fires continue, then this means a huge release of carbon, di carbon dioxide there. And it has a very serious impl implication for climate change because this will push very rapidly the greenhouse effects in the world. Hmm. And those effects one release cannot really be reversed. So if we want to start addressing climate change and not mitigation, then we have to see this does not happen. And the Nordhaus model, which one of them is the one you're referring to, would argue that let's not worry too much about that, but let's address the rise of the sea levels and what will happen in terms of mitigation. Hmm. So I would argue that the, that the issue that they don't want to address is that unfortunately climate change is not going to have affect everybody equally. Mm. It is going to have less effect on what's called the temperate lands, the global north as it were, Western Europe, North America, Canada and so on. Mm. And it will have much more adverse effect in what's called the global south, which is the tropics and the equatorial regions. So you are going to see a 
really that the burden of the climate change will fall much more on those who have not caused it and those who caused the major parts of the climate change which is of course profligate use of uh, carbon uh, based fuels fossil fuels and also consumption of the products of shall we say energy intensive industries hmm. so both senses these are the people who cause the climate change but they are not going to feel feel the effect of this so uh, so so badly hmm. So therefore, the, shall we say the differential impact of climate change is one issue and this sounds coming from the global south that people in the global north would advance this model is not surprising because it is really in their interest. The second part of it, the, the, if you look at capital, capital really does not look at long term effects. It really looks at very short term goals and therefore their goals are to make money today and if you want to make money today then of course looting shall we say the environment for resources converting it to capital is a much bigger gain than what happens 30 years later. So capital is notoriously short sighted. In fact finance capital today looks at only a quarter's returns. So given that all the econometric models that we are talking about privilege shall we say short term gains over long term uh, shall we say losses and therefore the econometric models are biased in favor of what I would call as the capital strategy for short term gains and I think this is also what we see. What we really need is a different way of looking at all of this and unfortunately economics should not is dominant today in the way we look at long term issues but when you look at long term issues they are far more societal and that cannot be shall we say addressed by looking at the so called econometric models we are talking about today. So thank you Prabhu for joining us today and that is all the time we have. Thank you for watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.